All right, this is a technique that's designed to help you save some of those three-star photos. You know, those photos that, well, they're not your best. They're not your five-star photos that you're going to print out. They're not your four-star photos that you're on the fence about. They're the three-star photos. They're not bad enough to throw away, but you don't know what to do with them because you, they're not bad enough to throw away. So <laughs> here's what we're going to do. Uh, try this next time. Uh, oh, Start by opening a brand new document and make it really wide. Make it twice as wide as it is tall, something like that, okay? The exact dimensions don't matter. You can choose wherever you like, but something like that. And click OK, and it creates a big document. Let's zoom down a little so you can get the size on screen there. Okay, now now go open up however many images you want to use in this. Uh, the minimum is three, and you can use as many as you have space for. So, you know, three, four, five, something like that. Or, of course, if you make a huge document, a wide, wide document, you can use more. But we're going to use four for this one. So go ahead and open up your four images. Here's uh, image number one. We're just going to grab it and drag it somewhere into our document. There we go, something like that. We can close the other image now. And then we'll open up image number two. And we'll grab it and drag it in. Open up image number three. Grab it and drag it in somewhere. And open up image number four. And we're going to drag it in someplace. Okay, now so here's our basically our four images and um, bring up the layers palette for just a moment as you can see we've got the four different layers that we're using here what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the layers palette for now because I'm going to give you a shortcut that lets you arrange the photos because the, the photos aren't any in any great arrangement as you can see here but I do want to arrange them and what we're going to do instead is use a keyboard shortcut that lets us jump to any layer we want just by clicking and pointing and clicking basically hold the command key on Mac or the control key on a PC, click on the layer you want, and then you can just pick it up and move it. So for example, if I want to go to this layer, I just command click and move it. Okay, something like that. And let's see, we'll move this one over to the end. We'll move this one over here, and this one over here, and that one, something like that. There we go. Okay, it, it does not look very good at all, that's for sure. And you could try to go and line everything up and all, but I'm going to give you a little trick for that too. Okay, so what we're going to do is this. Make sure, number one, that you've got the Move tool. Okay, then we're going to bring up the Layers palette. And we're going to link these four layers together. In Photoshop CS2, which is what we're using here, you would just hold the Command key on Mac, the Control key on P PC, and click on the layers you want to link together. Now they all move as one group. If you're using Photoshop CS or Photoshop 7, then you would click right here in the link column that you don't see here. There's a link column in the right in the layers palette of Photoshop 7 and CS. So you would just link, you know, click right there. So, since we're using CS2, we just command click them all together or control click on PC and they're all selected. Now we can hire the layers palette. Now, now that we've selected those, we're going to use these controls right up here in the top of the options bar. These are only visible if you have the move tool. So, get the move tool first, then we're going to use these controls right here. Let's zoom in so you can see on them. Whoa, we zoomed in big time. There we go. All right, so these here obviously align the vertical centers of the image. Then over here we're going to use to distribute the horizontal centers, and what that really means is we're going to uh, distribute the space between the images evenly, and that's what we really want to do. So let's go ahead and zoom back out, and first we'll center the object. So click this middle one right here where I'm clicking watch, it centers them. But the space in between them is not, see there's a smaller space here and kind of a bigger space here, and even a bigger space here. Now you're going to go over here and watch them subtly adjust, watch how subtle this is. Perfect. Now they are exactly perfectly aligned. So while they're while they're in that shape and all four layers are still selected, hold the shift key and just drag up a little bit so we have a little more space to add some text down bottom. Let's bring the uh, layers palette back up and let's click on the background layer. Now I want to fill the background layer with black and you do that by setting your foreground color to black. Okay, set that right there. And then we're going to fill it by pressing Option Delete or on PC it would be Alt Backspace. Okay. Now we'll hide this, we'll grab the Type tool, and we're going to choose a typeface. How about we choose, all the way off the screen here, you won't be able to see it, but oh, there we go, went a little too fast. We're going to choose Optima. Now, you can choose any other face that you want. You could choose any other sans serif, like uh, if you don't have Optima, try Myri uh, Myriad or Myriad Pro. If you don't have that, try like uh, maybe Helvetica New, or if not, Ver 
Verdana or, or um, Arial, one of those. But I, ideally, something like Optima or Myriad would, would work nicely. Now, make oh, we're also going to make it 14 point. And because it's so small, your type's going to be so small, I'm going to change the anti-aliasing from crisp to strong. I only do that when I'm using small type sizes like 14. All right, now let's um, zoom in a little bit so you can see uh, a little bit better. All right, let's switch to the Move tool. There we go. Zoom in. And then I'm going to press Command-R to make Photoshop's rulers visible. Then you're going to click right inside the ruler. All right, I see I'm over here on the left. Click right inside the ruler, and we're going to drag out to this spot right there on the third on the third uh, photo. Then we're going to click our Type tool. Right here, we're going to type in the name of the church. So the name of the church in all caps type is St. Christoph, C-H-R-I-S-T-O-P-H, St. Christoph Church. And let's go ahead and make it left justified. So it's left. There we go, over to the left. You want to do that usually before you start typing. And let's bring up the type palette. We'll press Command-T to bring up the type, the character palette. And let's knock this down to about 40. That is the spacing between the letters. We just want a little bit of spacing. So we're going to use 40. Okay. Now, once you've got that done, I want to duplicate this layer. The quickest way to duplicate a layer is just press Command-J, or on PC, Control-J. It makes an exact duplicate of the layer, so hold the Shift key, you can drag straight down. Now, what I want to do is I want to highlight that type, and the shortcut for that, you're getting a lot of shortcuts in this little tutorial, double-click right on the T, and it highlights that type. So now we can just type right over it, and that is in Cologne, Germany. And while I've got that, let's go ahead and highlight that type again. Two clicks. And then we'll make this only 10 point, nice and small. And lastly, I'm going to go back to our first our first type right there. We'll give this a different color, maybe a nice orange kind of color. Okay, that's not a nice orange, is it? Something more like that. There we go. Now, what we're going to do is let's let's get rid of this guy, this guy that we pulled out to use for measurement. So click on it and just drag it back over to the side and it disappears. Then we can hide our rulers by pressing Command-R or on PC, Control-R. And it's kind of hard to see the whole thing, so what I want to do is I'll blow it up here in a gray background so you can get a better idea of how the final product looks. Here's the final image back at 100% size. You can see it doesn't look bad. It lets you take some images that you maybe weren't so crazy about and put them into a layout that looks kind of cool. And it kind of has that uh, gallery poster look kind of to it. And uh, again, this is just a great way to save some of those photos that you weren't quite sure what to do with them. And they were never going to see the light of day, but this way they find a second life.